It is Sunday, August the 8th, and we have an update on what the changes to Carnival Cruise Line protocols actually look like. As Islanders are on ships across the fleet, we will give you an update. Plus, at what point do cruise ships break even? What capacity do cruise lines need in order to keep on selling? We've got all that right now on Island Time. Welcome back all you Islanders. We are so glad that you are here. We hope you're having a great weekend and we cannot wait until this evening, Sunday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, we are going live. And this session will be much different than the one we had earlier this week, as this week we gave a cruise review for our July 24th cruise. This will be a question and answer and highly interactive session. We cannot wait until this evening. Please join us. If you have not subscribed yet, please become an Islander. We want you part of this community and we promise you, you will benefit from being a part of it and we want you to contribute to this community. So please subscribe, ring the bell so you receive notifications when we upload new content or go live. Let's get right into the news. We know that yesterday was a big day. August the 7th was, well, you can call it masking day if you want to, but Carnival Cruise Line announced that masks would have to be worn indoors in certain areas, in certain situations, starting yesterday. We have fellow Islanders on ships right now. Lisa is on the Magic, as we shared yesterday. Eddie is on the Vista. And I have been in constant communication with both of them into yesterday evening. Of course, they have days at sea today. And they've shared what these protocols look like. Let's get started with first, the Magic. The Magic, of course, is back for the first time in 16 months on its first cruise with paying passengers, and Lisa shared several things with us last night. First, she shared, of course, dinner was a little bit slow, which is expected, and we've seen that across all the ships as they return, but look at this picture right here. Lisa was going into the main lounge, the welcome aboard show, as so many of us attend, and look at this picture. This picture. Mask up upon entry. Masks are required in this venue. Enjoy your drinks, but please sip and cover. You're going to see that term. That is what Carnival Cruise Line is branding as their wear your mask when you're not drinking. We've seen airlines uh, do different things. When your drink is down, your mask is up, all, you know, all those uh, different phrases. But Carnival is using with their uh, have fun, be safe, sip, and cover. So, on the magic, yesterday evening, if you went to the Welcome Aboard show, you saw this sign. And you had to wear your mask um, in this instance. And there are, yes, there are mask police, Okay. Uh, Lisa has shared this and Eddie has too. It is the security team that is doing most of the policing in areas where masking needs to take place in elevators, in places where you wait in line outside the comedy club, outside restaurants. But there are mask police. Look at this sign right here. Lisa went to the piano bar, as many of us do on the ship last night, on the magic. And yes, that you are reading that right. That sign does say, please wear a mask while dancing. <laughs> please wear a mask while dancing. She said that mask was there outside the piano bar and mask police security, okay? They were in the venue making sure people were wearing their mask. She even referenced that they had uh, told a couple who were dancing together that had their mask down uh, they were obviously a couple staying in the same cabin. The mask police told them to please get their mask up. Okay, that is a report from the magic. But things are different across the fleet. Eddie is on the Vista. He's kept us updated on the Vista. We know the uh, situation that the Vista was in last week and the special protocols that were enacted midweek. But um, 
Eddie, I asked Eddie very clearly because there's been so much communication about smoking in the casino. I asked Eddie multiple times last night, and he answered every time. Thank you, Eddie. Eddie said, you can drink in the casino, which of course makes sense. The casino wants you to drink in the casino, but it is going to be the sip and cover, okay? But on the Vista, currently, you cannot smoke. I know, I know, I know, I know. John Hill has already come out, okay? He mentioned today that you can smoke in other casinos, across the fleet, but they're asking in certain situations, like what happened on the Vista last week, for there to be no smoking. Now, the cruise, the issues that the Vista had last week should be over. The Vista came into port yesterday and a new group of cruisers are on the ship now. But Eddie confirmed a couple of times yesterday because I said, are you sure? He said, there is no smoking currently on the Vista. Made that change? Maybe so. Is there smoking in other casinos across the fleet? If you listen to John Hill, that answer is yes. We're just reporting, of course, what's being told to us by not only fellow Islanders, but people I've known for decades. I've known Eddie for a long, long time, uh, and I trust him and, and what he has to say there. Now, it looks like capacity is down across the fleet with Carnival Cruise Line down below that 70% to a 60-65% threshold. Royal Caribbean is holding true uh, this week and their capacity, which is like 50 to 55%. Royal Caribbean started with a lower capacity. They've stayed with that capacity. Carnival started at a higher capacity and they've kind of reeled that in just a little bit with everything going on. But a lot of you have asked the question at what capacity do cruise lines need to have in order to make money? That capacity could vary per ship, per brand. For instance, on Royal Caribbean, they actually discussed this on their earnings call this past week, and, and they said, matter of fact, it was Jason Liberty, the executive vice president and chief financial officer, said that with their bigger ships, the Odyssey of the Seas, of course, you're going to see the Oasis class, return very, very soon, that they only need about 35% capacity in order to break even for the cruise. And they're selling at 50 to 55%. So these ships are making money. Uh, Jason also said that the smaller ships, the older class of ships, because of their size being smaller, they need upwards of 50% capacity in order to break even. Um, Carnival is in about the same situation. Arnold Donald had mentioned a couple of weeks ago in an interview that, that they are seeing people spend more money on board than what, what they had seen pre-COVID, and that could be for a number of reasons. First off, a lot of people have onboard credit. Uh, their budget for their vacation may be larger than it once was because they've gone on less of them over the last year and a half, but they are seeing more people spend money on board. And so I would think that that a 50% threshold, maybe a little bit lower for Carnival, 40 to 45% would be the threshold that uh, the ship's currently running besides the Miracle. So the Vista, the Horizon, the Mardi Gras, the Magic, 40 to 45% capacity, that ship is breaking even and making money. Okay, so Carnival, who started at 70% around uh, capacity, has dropped it some, but they are still making money on every single selling that's going on, okay? And Carnival and Royal Caribbean, and of course Norwegian, who entered the market this week, they're sell selling out of Seattle. Finally, we have another cruise line selling. Celebrity, of course, is going. They know that it is paramount. Whatever needs to be done to keep on selling must be done. You saw Royal Caribbean's earnings numbers this week, losing it over a billion dollars last quarter for not selling. They know, cruise lines know, they have to do whatever is necessary to keep on selling, but they need to keep on selling. So if that means dropping this, these capacity numbers to where they are breaking even or making some money, but they are entering more and more ships, you're going to see Carnival Cruise Line this week enter more ships um, into the uh, to operation this week, cruise lines know they have to do whatever is necessary to keep these ships on the water and active. With that said, they also know that there are cruisers 
who will do whatever is needed to cruise. You and I may not like the masking policy, although I think more people are accepting uh, of the policy than when the news broke last Wednesday. Cruisers, there are some cruisers who will do whatever they have to do to cruise. And uh, cruise lines know that they can meet that 40, 50, 60% capacity on these ships with cruisers. They may upset people with the protocols and some people may cancel and not cruise right now. But they know if they need to fill a ship to 60% capacity, let's say, 70% capacity even, let's say, maybe down the road, that they can do that. There is a group of solid cruisers that will do whatever they have to do, do whatever protocols are in place in order to cruise. So I think we will see uh, more ships enter into fleets across the industry uh, this week, and especially when you look at uh, into the fall, you're looking at a lot of cruise ships entering in. We will find that magic number on capacity, and cruise lines will begin to make money on every ship that's in the fleet. And before too long, once they get half their fleet into uh, operation or more than half, you're going to see these companies start to generate and turn revenue quarter by quarter and appease, of course, shareholders in the meantime. That's it. That's the news that we have today. We can't wait to see you tonight, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, as we go live right here on Island Time.